This episode takes place moments after my sailboat was dropped back in the water and the anchor was set. After seven months of completing numerous projects on the hard, I was extremely nervous to see what would work and what wouldn't. Anything that didn't work out, I would then have to replace or fix before I could cross over to the Bahamas, cutting further into my time that I had Tiago on the boat before he had to fly back to New Mexico. But much to my surprise that day, everything seemed to be working out. It wasn't until later that things started breaking and the real problems happened. Check it out. The shark bit off my feet right now. I'd die happy. <laughs> so we're about to drop the dinghy to start testing the dinghy motor system. Thing in a junkyard. All right, good morning. Uh, we had a great night's sleep, absolutely great. The breezes felt great. It's just, it's amazing to be back. Really love it. Getting a lot done this morning, catching up with some people, making plans, but I am now coherent enough to start the water maker for the first time. Uh, I'm excited about this, a little nervous about it, but we're gonna give it a go. All right, here goes everything. Boost pump. So we had a good amount of leaking. Obvious where all the leaking was. Not the end of the world at all. Um, but areas that I need to either tighten up or maybe add some Teflon tape to. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. Whew. Super easy little fix. This one didn't even have any Teflon tape on it. Totally my fault while I was going through everything. Uh, just getting all the Teflon tape to line up on the correct side that I wanted to. There she is. Done my research, I've done my darndest. Now I flick the switch, see what happens. <laughs> 80 parts per million, that's awesome. This is what it's all about right here. This is uh, 20 gallons an hour. So about two hours ago, the water maker worked, but leaked slightly. It's like more work than actually installing it, just get these last couple leaks. So hopefully this is the last one and I'm done and I don't break it, installing it, uninstalling it. I a little seasick down here, trapped in my own sweat. This sucks. I'm jumping overboard very soon. <sighs> Haven't been successful to stop that leak with the water maker. I actually kind of started a new leak, which was very frustrating. I was seasick down there and I was not doing great. So 
We're gonna go hit some showers at the dinghy docks and go chill out for a bit. We'll get back to it. Day okay, round two. Literally just got done listening to the Rocky theme song. You know, getting, getting into it. Got everything back out. Took some ibuprofen, got breakfast, got coffee, slept decent. Seas are nice and nice and calm right now. Zip. It's time to get the water maker done. Let's go, you and me, let's go. Oh. Camera on me. All right, this is classic boat yoga right now. My foot is somehow propping up the membrane. Man, we should have filmed my tantrum yesterday. I had a big tantrum down here. Oh man, that would have been funny, but yeah. Hopefully I get this and these two things that's it, and I should be done leaking, but the only way to find out. I've done the best that I can. All that we can do now is pray to the plumbing gods. Oh dear plumbing gods. Actually, it's water, so it's still Poseidon, so I need to keep uh, praying to Poseidon. It looks good. All right, the boost pump is on. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go main. You ready, buddy? Yeah. yeah. We're at drinkable water already. See how much stuff I gotta take out to really get down into here. That's it, everything stows away. I can still get to the uh, water maker controls down here. I finished cleaning out my bilges today, but I thought it'd be a good chance while I'm making water to see here is where the water maker water actually comes in. This is a quick connect PEX fitting. So if you push in, put your finger on it, pull out, that is water maker water. It's really good. It's like a little sweet. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh yeah. I can run my vacuum out on anchor. It feels pretty good. So Tiago is talking to Alice, who will be on the boat next, just a couple days after he leaves. And it's funny because Tiago speaks four languages, Alice speaks five languages, I speak one language. And they're like, hey Daniel, we just switched from Spanish to Portuguese. And I'm like, wow, that's great, because I don't know either which one. I know a little bit of Spanish. Hablo muy poquito español, lo siento. Yo soy mucho gringo el máximo. Anyway, um, yeah, kind of just closing out the day here. Uh, the boat's looking really good. Look at the boat garden. Boat gardens never looked better. absolute heck of a week it really has been I think Tiago got in uh, just last Thursday so it'll it'll be a week and uh, yeah I'm so, I'm so happy he's been here he's been normally most crew members I take on are really in the end more work for me you know more work to teach them everything Tiago has easily easily been an asset to the boat not a detriment and uh, I mean, I've had fun with everybody I've ever had in the boat they've been great I've learned a lot but it's been a lot of work on my end but with Tiago it's fun and he helps just in immeasurable ways. Can't say enough good things about that guy. I, I really can't. It's, we're not even in the Bahamas. And we've just been having a blast. So it'll be really cool once we get there. But anyway, I'm going to get the boat tidied up, get things ready to go. And I think tomorrow morning we're going to head to West Palm Beach. got a bunch of fuel we have all the diesel all the gasoline we could possibly want the boat is loaded with dry goods we did our provisioning run yesterday I have enough electricity to run the boat it's good we we can cross the Bahamas I'm gonna try to probably tonight mess with the electrical system a bit more to get things set up but this is it we are gonna be taking the ICW to through Jupiter um, we might hop out to the open ocean at Jupiter and there'll be a straighter shot for West Palm Beach or we might take the intercoastal, haven't decided yet. Uh, but we're just gonna enjoy the day. 
How gorgeous is this? The water's getting clearer. The water really does get so much clearer the further south you go. What are we doing? So we're in Jupiter Inlet at the moment. I'm gonna go back out. I've only been in here once before. It was gnarly. Take a look. Adrenaline rush just touched the bottom here. I'm actually facing back into the inlet and just getting thrown. I think there's a sandbar that's developed here right now. I don't really feel like getting stuck hard to ground in this. We have a good speed to get pushed back in and then we're gonna take the bridge. Unfortunately, I wanted to go oceanside. That was some good, uh, good bit of fun there, some good splashing, but I don't want my keel to smack the bottom, so I'm gonna head back in. Looks like we're gonna be taking a lot of bridges here in a minute. That's good. Indian Town Road Bridge, Indian Town Road Bridge, this is Adventure Board, waiting for your next lift. Motoring down the Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway, you'll see a lot of bridges. Some of them are 56 feet high, those are fixed bridges which don't need to be lift. But these bridges, you call ahead and they'll lift it for you. It's a pretty cool system and it's amazing to see. Although if you're sitting in traffic, I'm sure it's not half as enjoyable. But most bridge operators are very kind, understand your speed. This one was great, we didn't even have to slow, we just came straight on through. Adventure born kept on trucking. Eeyoo! So we've made a few friends while we've been uh, been going through the canals here. Let's see if they'll they'll wave to us. And I wish us good luck again for the camera. Good luck, fellas, with you cross training. Way to go, boys. <laughs> we are officially in West Palm Beach. It's been a very very long day. In a minute, we're gonna get to see the anchorage and pick our spot. Hope it goes well. All right, we're at the anchorage just south of the West Palm Beach Inlet. Finally able to see cruising mono hole after cruising mono hole after cruising mono hole. My people, my brethren, it's great. I gotta find a place to anchor up and uh, relax. Everything seemed fine when we anchored, but then the lights started flickering and I realized there was something majorly wrong with my batteries. I was so stressed. Seven months on the hard, go, everything's gonna work. It was not a realistic expectation of my boat with what I did, including a, as you see here, it's not a bomb, it's a, it's kind of like a bomb. Feels like I'm working on a bomb, but it's not, it's my battery bank. Uh, yeah, so there's even more electrical gremlins than what I started with today. Super stressful. Uh, we have a, we've got a bunch of food, a bunch of things, and, I, and I'm actually on a time crunch now to figure it out. Uh, as well, um, you know, we want to get Tiago to the Bahamas before he has to fly out and then I have to be there in time for Alice. So all these things come down to stress and that's a lot of times you don't get to see this in a YouTube video. You, a lot of people and like myself post all the fun parts, but it's actually a ton of stress with it. And this is one of the most stressful, this, this is definitely the most stressed I've been since I launched my boat for sure. Since I launched my boat, since even a, a while back before that, this is the real sailing life. Right here, what you see, it's not the babes in the bikinis. It's the dude, sweaty, working on something. He touches the wrong thing and you broke it and now you can't get the part and you finally get the part but it's the wrong part and it goes on and on and you wanna cry but you can't. But thankfully, I'm in good company. I've got Tiago with me who's dedicated to the camera, holding it down, dedicated to helping me. I think that's about it for this monologue. Thanks for tuning in. Tiago, you got anything you want to add to this, buddy? You can do it, man. Come on. <laughs> Just don't blow up the boat. That's a solid advice. All right, well, I'm gonna get right back to it. I was so stressed out about this problem, it was insane. I ended up calling a few friends, some that were completely unhelpful, but thankfully, my buddy Forrest came through. It was such a simple solution for the short term of this problem. We got it solved. Just did a wonderful hangout off the back, 
Look at the blue lights, dove underneath it, had a blast. Pretty tired, pretty burnt out, pretty stressed. That swim helped a lot. It's weird, it's almost like the boat's meant for enjoyment. Way too compromising. <laughs> uh, we just got the boat ready to go in about 30 minutes, including meal prepping thanks to Tiago. We're gonna go to Fort Lauderdale with all haste because a follower of mine has offered to help me with the lithium battery bank because he has the exact same stuff. Super stoked. Gonna go do this, get it done, get to the Bahamas, have some fun. Here we go. That's Tiago pointing to which way he wants me to drive the boat. But I can't drive the boat because I'm filming. So Tiago's gonna use his massive back muscles. This is better than the gym. And the, and the inspiration of my narrating is every painful move. Heave! Heave, lad! Heave her in! Paul, you're almost there! I just don't want to hit my boat. So right now it's spinning, it's spinning. There it is! Good haul. That's how you do it. So we're redlining the engine to try to get to this bridge that's already lifted. He said if we can hurry up, he'll keep it, but at any minute now he can say too late and drop it. Every minute further is a minute closer. And it doesn't seem exciting, but it is to me. He's gotta hold it. He's gotta hold it now. We're so close. That looks so much closer than normal. This is about the hundredth bridge that we're lifting. Okay, so I got a little bit bored while we were motoring down the icy building all day long. So I decided to start showing people the treasure chest that I had, which was a ton of fun to see their faces. We're gonna hide it! No anywhere I could bury this treasure? So we've lifted about a uh, hundred bridges now. We've still got, I don't even know how many to go. It doesn't really matter. We're just gonna go. We're gonna go as long as we can. Motoring down through the Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway, getting to see all the interesting canals and the houses. It's a really cool thing. I really enjoy it. But for sure, I'm ready to get to the Bahamas. All these motorboats waking us and the loud music. I just want to get back to nature and to the beautiful blue. I cannot believe the footage from up there. It looks so cool. It's a little dicey though, landing the drone with all these wakes going, the boat's going up and down. Ended up uh, cutting my finger a little bit. It's a, it's a battle wound. We're getting held up by bridges and a lot of wakes from a lot of people. It's actually really enjoyable, this section. The channel seems very clear, very deep. Not really a huge concern. The houses are insanely glorious. We're finally getting some shade. The temperature is just beautiful. I mean, look at some of these houses. Insane. This is only part one. Check out part two coming soon as we fix my DIY lithium battery banks and head out for the beautiful Bahamas. See you then.